So good morning, everyone. It's or I think it's probably afternoon now. Um, it's nice to nice to be here, so I can talk about the EMED story once again. It's nice to see so many friends in the audience, and we've got a few shareholders as well. I know this is the last session of the day, and I know you've been running overtime. And I, it's nice to see that so many of you have remained behind to hear about EMED. At least that's what I thought you were doing. But I understand lunch is being served after this, so I suspect you're just hanging out for lunch. <laughs> Um, yeah. EMED is a, is a good story. It's an interesting story. Uh, it started in 2005. We uh, first listed on AIM uh, with uh, projects in, uh, in Cyprus. Uh, but since that time, and it's been a very short amount of time, really, we've, uh, we've become the 100% owner of a very, very large copper resource and mine in Spain. And then, in fact, the mine in Spain, which I'll talk about at length today, is, is the project that we are focusing on the most. Uh, we will also expand that project as time goes on. And as Alistair mentioned, we have some um, exploration interest in Slovakia, and we have actually a, a gold mineral resource. All of this, of course, uh, is 100% owned by EMED. We, can, we control our destiny in these things, and that's quite an achievement for a company that uh, is as young as EMED and, and relatively small. Uh, just so you know where we are, the, uh, the gold mine is the Rio, Rio Tinto gold mine, and yes, it's the one that you, that you know. It's the one that uh, started Rio Tinto off. Um, our, uh, our gold resource is in Slovakia, and uh, we are heading towards a mining license, a mineral license there as well, but I'll speak about that that later, and of course we have some copper prospects in, in uh, Cyprus. Won't talk so much about Cyprus because we've actually parked those on the side for the time being. Uh, they're, uh, they're rather small, they're valuable, and we might, we'll, we'll be able to develop them, we think, in some way, or, or, or use them in some way in the future, but for now our focus is on Rio Tinto and Slovakia. Uh, here we have a timeline of, uh, uh, of our history, it hasn't been uh, Easy going, of course it never is for a mining company, especially a junior mining company. But we, we managed to get through the gold uh, the, for, through the global financial crisis, which was which was a challenge for a lot of small companies. Uh, we are we were very fortunate in that we have a good core of shareholders who are professionals investing in mining and understand the game very well. They also support what we're trying to do because they believe in the, in particularly in the Rio Tinto asset and the and the management. Um, we, we got over the crisis, we, we uh, continued to work hard, we then listed in Toronto in 2010 because there was interest being expressed in, in, in North America for the work that we were doing. Um, so we went, we went ahead with that, um, with that IPO. Uh, that's worked out well for us, we still, uh, we still have uh, huge exposure on AIM of course and wish it to continue that way, but having exposure in North America has, done us, has certainly done us no harm. Um, in uh, this year, quite busy as ever, we, uh, uh, we've been doing all the things that the government requests of us, and so we've submitted all of our, our documentation and the updates. I'll speak about that in a few minutes, but most importantly, we'll, and those of you who have been following the story will recognize this, we have consolidated all the land that we needed for the, uh, for the uh, Rio Tinto Copper Project. That was quite a big uh, and significant thing and should be, should be taken note of because it's resolved a lot, of, a lot of issues, both for us, the landholders, and the government. So here we are. What's, these, are the, these are the highlights of the in, in brief of what we have at Rio Tinto. First and foremost, we own all of it. Uh, and that was quite a challenge through the, through the few years to actually build it up from uh, evaluating it to, to owning half and then to taking full ownership. We have an agreed financing plan with customers. Uh, Goldman Sachs has, a, has for a long time, had for a long time expressed interest in the, in the project. They came down and had a look at it. Uh, and last year or thereabouts, we actually mandated Goldman Sachs to help us arrange the funding. I think having, uh, having been able to do that so early and get Goldman Sachs on board uh, with, their, with their name and their support has been a great benefit to, to the project. 
and, will con and obviously will be as we move to production, raising the money that we need to kick this, uh, to kick start this. It's important to remember that this is a mine that was closed down and put on care and maintenance, but all the infrastructure is there. Why is that important? Well, first of all, you don't need to spend as much money restarting it as you would from greenfields. The difference is huge. Secondly, because all the infrastructure is there and it's been kept well under a care maintenance regime, it doesn't take as long to start up. The, uh, the length of time that it will take to start this mine is a lot less than most others, as you'll see. Uh, we have good support from the Spanish government. Uh, they're working proactively with us. I mean, we've, we've had our ups and downs with the Spanish government over the years, but uh, uh, they see that this is a tremendous opportunity not only for us and our shareholders, but also for them and employment in the region. Uh, our, it's our intention to start production at the end of next year, 2013. Um, as is always important with the company, it's nice to have an array of projects so that you have something to start with and then something to go on with. And that's what we're trying to do in EMED, and we've actually succeeded in doing that, particularly with the Slovakian project that we're we're continuing to work on that has a much longer development time, is small, but nonetheless is very worthwhile. One of the things that has stood us in good stead throughout the length of time it has taken us to get to the restart position that we're now in is that at Rio Tinto we're talking about copper. And copper, of course, is one of the, uh, one of the strengths of the, of the market these days. People believe in copper and the price has remained strong and will continue to remain strong. It is for this reason that our shareholders, Goldman Sachs, and others have continued to support us through a period of time that was, I admit, longer than we expected. Uh, the copper price has held up and, and will continue to do so. And the reason is uh, demonstrated on this slide because the, the demand remains good. Copper is something that is used, it's consumed. Uh, the, the oncoming production coming on takes time. There are always problems with mines uh, ongoing, so therefore uh, the product that we are selling is one that will enjoy a pretty strong price going forward. And that, obviously, that is a key element for a mine such as this. Well, the mine is, not, is located not too far um, from Seville, uh, it has all the infrastructure around. It's very close to uh, very close to the port, about seventy odd kilometers. Uh, we have power, water, and all of those things, which of course are big ticket items that we don't have to worry about. Another reason why this project is uh, uh, is appreciated by the people who, who've invested. What are we doing now? What do we have to do to get the restart going? Well, in this last quarter of the year, we have to um, work through with the government to get administrative standing. Now, those of you who followed this story will realize that administrative standing is something that we've been wanting for a while. Uh, that's recognition by the government that we have all the things necessary to proceed uh, with the opening of the mine, technical competency, financial competency, and so on. The government now has everything that they need to grant us that. They're evaluating it all now. We've submitted this information some time ago, and we've just revised it all at their request, just bringing it up, up to date. So we're focusing on that now. The government, um, the government is helping us with that, uh, and I expect that we'll, we'll hear something this quarter. Last year, they said that they would wanted to resolve all the issues by the third quarter of this year. Uh, so we're at the end of the third quarter, but they're working very hard. Uh, with us to try and come through on that on that promise. What we have to do after that is uh, discuss with them uh, rehabilitation bonding that uh, is normal in Spain and in other places. We have to have those we have to have those discussions. Uh, I'm in the process now also of, with Goldman Sachs of finishing the financing documentation. So what we're what we're trying to do is have everything lined up so that when the final due diligence is done for the loan drawdown in, in November. The due diligence is done in November with the loan drawdown early next year. Everything, everything is ready to go. 
a few shots of, uh, of what we have. The, uh, uh, the infrastructure is extensive and it's in good nick. Uh, it's, it's in good order. The, uh, the back end, the thickening will, be, will all be new equipment. That's quite a substantial investment for us, but it's, uh, it's something that we need to do and want to do. Um, the other the thing to bear in mind as well with this, I mean, you need, you need, you need a, a product that has a good price and will continue to be saleable. We've got that. You need uh, plant and equipment to produce it. We have that. Uh, the other thing that you need, and you all know this in the mining game, is uh, decent reserves and resources. We've been very fortunate because when we acquired uh, the Rio Tinto mine, we acquired with it all of the data that was done by Rio Tinto, which means we had, uh, we had, we had known reserves of about 600,000 tons of contained copper. That is uh, enough to keep us going for about 14 years at five to nine million tons per annum. Uh, but it, the, the important thing to appreciate is that we know it's there, the bankers know it's there, and that has allowed us to proceed with the things that we're doing with the financing and the startup. We also believe, uh, and I'm not the geologist as you know, we also believe that in very short order we'll be able to uh, increase those reserves very substantially by some drilling pro a drilling program that's being planned in the, in the pit and surrounds. Um, what's that in dollars and cents? Well, it's actually quite a lot. The, um, the, the operating cash flow is at 350, which is the one that I like to look at because that's more or less around the current prices. You can pick, you can pick the price you like. Um, but it's $150 million a year. Uh, the project net present value is uh, a half a billion uh, or, or more depending on the discount rate. And of course, if you increase the price, it just it gets better. Now, those figures, uh, and you have to form your own view, are a lot higher than the current value of the company. Um, we, uh, we believe that with the restart of the mine, with that sort of cash flow, uh, with the length of time with the, with the amount of reserves we already have and the fact that we'll increase the reserves substantially means that we really have a project here that is, that is uh, financially speaking, sits up and dances. It's, it's really a very good, a very good uh, project ready to go. So what are we going to do now? What do we have to do? Well, we're halfway up this, um, uh, this slide in 2012. Uh, we're, we're looking at the admin standing, as I mentioned to you before. We have put together all of the land that we needed, so that's good. We have independent uh, engineers, merit engineering, putting the final touches on the detailed, money, uh, detailed plant and equipment list that we require. Uh, we will have uh, that done this month, October. We will then bring in the Goldman Sachs independent reviewers to look at all of that for uh, arranging in, uh, finally the the project finance we require. This is all aimed to start commissioning at the end of 2013. Complicated slide. You can, we've got copies out in the back. You can have a look at that uh, at your at your leisure. But we have, uh, you know, we have started in earnest to prepare ourselves, the site, uh, for production startup. We're recruiting people. We've got engineers in place. We're doing. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, more detailed studies. Uh, we have, we are now working in close cooperation with the landholders that used to cause us problems in the area, but now they're part of us. In fact, the consideration we paid for the land was in a large part EMED shares, which they were delighted to have because they too want to be a part of what comes, what comes next in the story. We have, as part of our plan, uh, a number of initiatives at Rio Tinto to expand not only reserves, as I mentioned earlier, but there are other things that we can do which will allow us, we think, to increase the life of mine further and increase the annual production. Uh, one of the things with a mine of this type, if you, if you can actually increase throughput, it will drop your unit cost tremendously and the profitability goes up across the board. Very, uh, a very key principle that we're looking at very closely and we'll be focusing on that once we get once we get the show on the road. 
Just a brief word uh, on uh, Slovakia. It deserves more than a brief word, but time, time is at a premium. This is something we found ourselves. It's, uh, again, it's 100% owned, owned by us. Uh, we, uh, we know that uh, it's a worthwhile resource, but we also know that we have to work with the community and, and, and government to actually get it into a position where we can move this into production. There's, there's quite a bit of work to do, but it's very, very, uh, very, very encouraging. Uh, it's 461,000 uh, indicated, 596,000 uh, inferred. The, the, the last economics we did, the gold price was a lot lower than it is now, and it looked, uh, it looked pretty reasonable. So if we run them again, uh, I'm sure that uh, it will be equally encouraging, if not more so. With EMED, we have a very large project that's ready to start up and will kick into production very soon. We also have other things going on which will allow us to uh, take on other projects as time progresses. We have, uh, we have the resource in Slovakia, the gold resource in Slovakia, which we'll work on. That will come behind the copper. We have our interest in Cyprus, which are not getting the attention they deserve, but nonetheless, they are there, and we'll be looking at them in due course. Uh, and of course, we'll spend a lot of time at Rio Tinto looking for other ways to expand production and expand the, the mine life, and the, the, uh, the potential is there. We have a pretty good uh, senior management team, and they're supported by uh, a lot of very good people and engineers underneath. What we're trying to do at the site, it takes time, but we're, we're meeting with some successes. We're trying to uh, uh, turn it into a, a Spanish site and Spanish uh, professionals. Uh, we're working on that, and it's, it's something that's quite important to us because all of us, uh, that you see on this list anyway, we're not from Spain, we're very experienced in the mining industry and the mining game. We know what to do, but we think this is a Spanish operation and needs to be, uh, uh, needs to be uh, molded so that it can be taken over by, by Spanish residents, Spanish citizens, and we're working on that. Uh, we have a very good uh, board. It's, uh, it's a board composed of people that have uh, experience in copper trading, in financing, and in engineering, in, in, uh, in mining. It's a board that is um, probably more suited to a company that's bigger than EMET, but we wanted to get it into place with the proper representation so that we as a company and senior man management were ready to handle the transition from being a small company to not so small. Shareholding, well, the board management have about 6%. Um, RCF, uh, a longtime supporter of ours out of the US, have 14%. They helped us through the, uh, the global financial crisis with a convertible note. XGC, Yangu Zhuang Copper, uh, new shareholder, 12%. That's a, been a very good uh, strategic alliance for us. We, uh, we talked to a number of Chinese uh, smelters last year. Uh, they were all interested because they all need offtake. That of itself was gratifying. But this company was really keen to get involved in, in Europe. This was, this was their first investment here. They liked the asset, they liked the people, and obviously they wanted the offtake. It's quite a small amount of offtake in terms of their size. Uh, but they were very keen to support it. And uh, they have uh, twice put in money as they lifted, as they lifted their investment. RBC Asset Management, very big fund out of Canada. They came in during, uh, during the IPO in 2010. Rand Merchant Bank, a name you recognize, Rumbo 5, simple zero. Rumbo is the company that owned most of the land around the mine that we needed to begin operations. Rumbo is the company that was uh, not cooperating with us formally and in, in causing issues, some of which you would have read about in the releases. Rumbo is now a major shareholder and are completely aligned with us and in fact are helping us uh, jump through the, the final hoops with the government. So it's a very good, uh, it's a very good uh, deal to have put this together. And the other thing with the, with the land holding situation is that the government greeted it with, uh, I think, a collective sigh of relief, mainly because they knew that it would shorten the timeline a lot rather than go through the compulsory acquisition, which was always, uh, a, a path open to us, so we always knew we'd get the land. 
but it shortened the timeline and avoided uh, sort of nasty, nasty fights, and it allowed us all just to get on with it. So the government is very pleased, and we, we've seen that uh, in the very real terms in our dealings with the government. Astor Holdings, formerly MRI. Well, MRI, now Astor, uh, uh, owned, owned the mine. We've taken it over from them. So they took, uh, as part payment, investors in us. They've been, they've been shareholders and supporters for a very long time. This looks like a complicated slide. It's not. It, uh, it is to show you the, the sad fact, that, which you know already, that the, uh, the mining sector overall has performed not so well in the last little while. This is the TSX, not, not a probably mirrors. Um, so if it's any consolation, the E-Med share price, and I think, uh, I think it's an important point to make, to be perfectly frank, that the E-Med share price has held up rather well in very, very difficult conditions. And I think it's done that because people really do recognize the value of what we have here and the work that's gone into it. And the fact that we're just on the threshold of getting what we need from the government so we can begin, we can begin our production plans. How much money is it going to cost? Well, a couple hundred million, which 200 million, uh, which is a lot less than if we were starting from scratch. All the plant and equipment that are, is required at Rio Tinto, if you went out to the new plant showroom, would cost you around a billion dollars. For us, not so much. Uh, it's, uh, uh, we've had the engineers go through. We, uh, we think it'll be around, this is US dollars, I guess it's noted on the slide, 210 million. We have found, we've lined up through Goldman Sachs, 190 million of that, 175 from Goldman Sachs. Uh, they'll, they'll be helping us to arrange that and the Chinese smelter that is now our shareholder is providing an overrun facility if we need it. Um, We've always said that we'll need to raise funds in the fourth quarter of this year, and we will do that so we can, we can top up. But the important thing is that uh, because of the, the project the way it is, we've got the financial support not only to keep going, but the financial support that will be required uh, to get the show on the road. Um, so here we are. The market cap is <clears throat> about 120 million pounds. Uh, the NPV of the project is, is much greater than that. You'll have to take your own view, but uh, it is greater than the current share value. Um, we are on the threshold of beginning the project in Spain. We're all ready to go. Uh, we think we'll get what we need from the government uh, very soon in accordance with their promises. We've taken some major, major steps this year, getting, getting through some of the hurdles that were in front of us. We have a terrific team, not only shareholders and, and, and members of the board, but more importantly, those people on the ground at Rio Tinto who are actually going to do this for us. Very good team. Uh, in the future, as you've seen, we've got other projects that we will work on, but there's no doubt right now the focus for us is on the copper project. There we are. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, any, any questions uh, for John? I'm right there. Um, I'm, I'm a bit uh, confused as to the price that you get for ore versus the price for cathodes and how much time it takes to refine it, where the nearest refinery might be. Is that better? Yeah. I generally like to walk around, but I can't hear. The, um, fortunately for us, the nearest smelter is, is in Huelva, which is about 75 kilometers away. So we can truck the copper concentrate there, and the port is also in Huelva as well. So we can, we can ship from there. We need to finalize uh, marketing arrangements, but uh, I mean, we've, we've sold off take to XGC, the Chinese company, already. Uh, we've had inquiries for other, uh, from other potential customers. Atlantic Copper, who are situated in Huelva, uh, want some of this as well. Um, we've been talking to them, and we'll get, we'll get down to specifics this time because we all know that getting the startup is, is imminent. So for us, uh, and we are sellers of copper concentrate, we're not going to do anything else, it's relatively straightforward. Just 
drive it down the road and, and leave it at port, either either to be shipped out or into the smelter. So, so as soon as it's loaded on uh, a ship, you can get a NLC for the price? We can. I mean, we're, we're, we're looking at the details of how that will be done, but it'll be done in the normal way, and there'll be a normal toing and froing about how long and when and how much and that sort of thing, but it's all, <coughs> all standard, all standard stuff. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, there's a question in the middle here. Hello, John. Um, you mentioned administrative standing, and obviously that is key um, to progress as far as the company is concerned. Um, my understanding was that that would occur within quarter three, and I think you mentioned that. It appears that there is some slippage on quarter three. It, I mean, we're almost at the end of quarter three, so that ain't going to happen. It, is it possible to pin you down and ask you when your best estimate is in terms of administrative standing, when we will get it? Yeah, that's a fair, that's a fair question. And um, our shareholders have been ever patient on this issue because we've had uh, guesses before as to when we would get administrative standing. It's a key, it's a key element, obviously. Um, and yes, they did say Q3, and um, I, I doubt we'll get it this week, so let's just say Q3 is, is passed. Look, we, uh, we think we'll get it in the next two months, uh, October, November. Uh, why do we think that? Well, the government has been reacting in a very, very much more active way than previously. Also, the government is, has been shaken up a bit with what's going on in Spain and in Andalusia. They realize that they need to be seen doing something. One of the things I didn't mention with this project, but it's, it's absolutely critical, is that it will be the largest industrial project in Andalusia when it gets going. And it's literally sitting there on the shelf. All they have to do, the government, is take it off the shelf and say, there you are. That's one thing. The second thing is unemployment in Andalusia is higher than anywhere else in Spain. Spain is higher than anywhere else in Europe. So down where we are in, in Seville, the rates are uh, above 30%, probably above 50 for the younger people. When we start this mine, it'll take a thousand people to put all the bits together. Uh, I seek forgiveness from my engineering, our engineering manager who might see this. It's not that simple, but they'll, they'll put they'll be a thousand people to do it all. And then ongoing, there'll be 350 to 400 people employed permanently. That is a huge, huge boost to the economy. Not only an immediate hit, but it'll just, it'll just change the face of the area. The government knows that, and they know that they have to do something because of the political situation that we all now see in Spain, but it's been evident for a long time. So it's in their interest, as well as ours, to move this along. Okay. Thank you. More questions for John? Uh, I attempt you out? Yeah, one from Ewan. Post proper NPV. Of well, course. Um, okay. If that's uh, if that's uh, um, all the questions, then uh, thanks very much to John Leach from Emed Mining. We'll break for lunch. John, thank you very much. Thank you.